Hello. Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me and see me? I just want to wait and make sure you guys can hear me and see me. Okay. Per you see me. That's good. Can you hear me? Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. I just want to let one of our guests backstage know that I can see them. Okay. All right, guys. Whew. Sorry. Warm weather. We're all running around, running around. So <laughs> thank you, Jesse and Lisa. Um, if you guys want to come on up, come on, Jesse and Lisa. So I'm just going to say a quick hello to everybody in the chat, and then I'll start bringing up our guests for tonight. We've got a special guest from Instagram, and that is Diane at Shale Hollow Farmstead joining us tonight. So she is backstage right now. So Diane, if you'll just give me a minute and I will say hello to everybody and then I'll give you a heads up when I'm going to bring you up. But our guests, if I know some of the guests are able to come up now, others cannot. And I understand that. But whenever you guys are ready. Um, hey, Leanne Mennonite Farmhouse. Hey, Miss Place Country Girl. Hey, Tony Kettle Kitchen. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Hey there, Blue Pixie at Blue Self-Reliance. Hello, sweet Miss Blue, not Pam. That's right. Don't call her Pam. Hey, Mrs. Lazy Days Ahead. That's Lisa. Hey, Gathered Together Homestead, welcome in. And Lisa Colovi, the mod of the day, right? Jesse is also an amazing mod. And Leanne at Mennonite Farmhouse. I thank all my mods for being so amazing. Hey, Rebecca's touched by yarn and more. <clears throat> oh, Lisa Colovi's at it. Did everyone see Leanne's jam made in a bread machine? I did not see it yet because I literally just got indoors as this started. So <laughs> uh, let's see here real quick. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody says they can see and hear. Hello, gathered together. Growing with Hudson is here. Hello, Q. Just going to try and scroll through this. Yes, there is beautiful sunshine behind me. We had an absolutely gorgeous day here today. It was warm. I actually had to get the pig pools out for tomorrow because it's supposed to be in, I think, like 80, and we're going to be gone all day, so the pigs needed something to take care of themselves. Hey, Grace and Fire. Hello, Rochelle Brampton Gardner. I see you backstage, Lisa and Jesse. I see Q back there, too. Just want to finish saying hello to everybody. Hey, Berkshire Farm. Hello, our new land. Hello, Aunt Lynn from the Aunt Lynn Show. I say hello also. I think we're almost down there. Hey, Craig, Tim, welcome in, welcome in. Hey, Jerry Carpenter, Self-Reliance, welcome in. Totally get it. It's late by you. It'll blow my mind, huh, Leanne's? Recipe will blow my mind. I got to check. Leanne's recipes always blow my mind. Hey, Tony Renee at home. Hey, Kiki from Urban Girl Gardening and Lifestyle. Oh, sorry. It's pouring down rain by you, Tony. Oh, I think we're getting to the bottom. Everybody's saying hello, hello, hello. I love it when everybody says hello. I have my jam done. In fact, a lot of it's been eaten already. My neighbor's enjoying it too. 
Uh, Carpenter Self Reliance. I'm not sure where Jesse and Lisa get their stickers from, but I get mine from Sticker Mule. I find that they are a little bit pricier. I see heads nodding in the background. I find that they're a little pricier, but I find they're worth it. Uh, the reason why I went with um, Sticker Mule was because of weather. The stickers hold up better to weather. And so that's what I do. And usually I get a deal on them where I get like 300 of them and I get some free hot sauce, totally random, but it's, I don't know. It makes me feel like I got a deal, I guess, but I, I really like sticker mule. I think you're a good company. All right. I just, Hey LG, welcome in Lori. No worries, Rochelle. No worries. I know your Wi-Fi is cutting out. Okay, I think we made it to the bottom. Let me bring up our guests. I'm going to bring up a friend from Instagram who was a part of the May Homestead Challenge with me. Hey, Garden to Table with Heather Lynn. Welcome in. And it is Diane from Shale Hollow Farmstead. And I pinned her IG account. So if you want to follow her at the top of the chat. Diane, are you ready to come up? All right. Hello. Hey, guys. How are you tonight? I'm great. Thanks. You guys will have to forgive me. This is my first time doing this, and the anxiety kicked in a little bit. <laughs> We've all been there, so don't you worry about a thing. Just if you get too anxious, either talk or sit quiet, whatever works best for you. It works. All right. I'm going to bring up our other gifts, our other gifts, our other guests. <laughs> They're laughing at me backstage. Uh, let me just see here real quick. I saw somebody come in. Hey, Sandy, welcome in. Welcome in. And Sandy, by the way, suburban homesteader, Wyoming, Arizona, my raspberries and my elderberries are doing great. So thank you so much. So far, so good. Very excited. Hey, cool gamer. Q, are you ready? Okay. Hello. Hey, hey. Hey, hey, and I'm going to bring up Jesse and Lisa. You guys ready? <laughs> He's something else. Oh, I, hey, we're on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like you didn't know. Like you didn't know. So, Jesse and Lisa, you guys know Q, obviously. Yes. And above you is Diane from Shale Hollow Farmstead, and that's Jesse and Lisa. Whoops, there we go. Other way. There we go. Nice to meet you. And that's <laughs> Q from Growing with Hudson in the other corner. Awesome. Nice to meet you guys. Now I can put a face to the name. <laughs> right, right. I don't know if that's good or not. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's good. I'm so happy you finally met me. <clears throat> <laughs> me too. I, I, I'm so, so glad that me and Diane met and got connected because I'm just all Same. over this barn chore couture stuff now. <laughs> I didn't realize what I was wearing was a thing. I, me neither. Who knew we were trendsetters? <laughs> <laughs> so let me just go to the chat real quick because it gets crazy and I don't want to miss people and I hate when I miss people. Uh, Garden a Table with Heather Lynn. I think I already said hello to you, but I want to make sure, my friend. Hey, Jennifer Anger. Good times. Homestead with Jen and Steve. Hey, Kitchen Garden Therapy. That's Slava. So uh, I have a couple other guests. I know they're running behind and everything. But so I was wondering if everybody would just say like... Um, like how many acres of land they have and what kind of food they're growing. So whether it's they're raising animals or you're raising a garden or whatever. Q, you want to start us off? Okay. Well, I just want y'all to know that I'm so like not literate about all this technology. You see all y'all wide and I'm straight. <laughs> because you have your phone vertical. If you turn it the other way, it should be fine, sweetie. Right. But don't worry about it. Um. But I'm a Q from Growing Will Hudson, and I uh, garden in my apartment or outside my apartment. I don't have acres yet, but that's my future goal. But I just harvest lettuce and potatoes. I have 
growing sweet potatoes, tomatoes, mm -hmm. uh, peppers, um, beans. Nice. Uh, 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 see, if y'all wouldn't ask me, I would have remembered everything. <laughs> I have blueberry bushes. I have uh, ponderosa lemon. I have raspberries. I An have orchard. Pork radish. Huh? You have apple trees. Oh yeah, apple yeah. Trees. Wow. Um, but that's just to name a few. Can you tell them um, how you managed to get apple trees on your uh, the setup you have? You know what I mean. Okay, so with everything that's going on, you have to sometimes think outside the box. So I have a cousin that lives um, around the same area and I couldn't beat the deal. It was like a uh, golden delicious and a red delicious for like 13 bucks. Wow. And I'm like, oh, I got to get this. So I went and saw the deal and I came home and I called my uh, cousin and I was like, well, um, I said, do you mind if I put these apple trees in your backyard? I say, now, nah, I'm not guaranteeing when I'm getting my land, but, you know, it might be a year or two, you just be babysitting. You know, I'll come over there and check up on them and feed them and all that stuff. And she said, you can put anything in my backyard. So that was a blessing in disguise because I, I make a lot of stuff with uh, apples, apple butter, vinegar, all that stuff. And I don't have to pay that money at the stores. Now I have those two trees in our backyard. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. When I saw you did that, I was like, deal. And Kiki Soto was saying, and let me just go back to it. Hang on a minute. She said, Q is the inspiration we all need to get our stuff together. So true, Q. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, you're awesome. And I saw your potatoes today. Not bad, girl. <laughs> I'm eating over here. No, <laughs> that's good. That's good. Jesse and Lisa, you want to go next? Well, we're Jesse and Lisa. Lazy days ahead. If you don't already know that. Um, <laughs> the uh, so somebody's got to do the math for me. And you said how many acres we have? What's seventy-five by one hundred and fifty? That's how much acres I have. <laughs> that gives me an idea. <laughs> we live in a suburban neighborhood. Yeah. We're substandard. Yep. But uh, and the only thing growing around here is my my belly from all the cooking Lisa's are doing. Well, no, that's not true. Now I have oh, we got, got grow bags this year, yeah. and so just been inspired by all the homesteaders and everything. Even though we don't, you know, have acreage, we do have a backyard. But so I actually have like four blossoms on my tomato plant and. Uh, a couple of blossoms on a cucumber, and I have a couple of peppers, but I can't remember what kind they are. It's either bell pepper or jalapeno. So okay. it's like, woohoo! I'm yeah. excited. But we have harvested our loofah already, oh. and it's uh, really nice. Are you serious? Yeah, it's a, loofah. <laughs> it's a, a real loofah. That's nice. But I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't grow this. I, <laughs> exactly. the <laughs> I was gonna say. I, I may need to go to that farmer's market because I don't think I'm going to get. Uh... And, I, and I got the small one. Jeez. <laughs> but I, and I have a cup, some uh, board. Yeah. yeah. The board seeds that I've planted, but and papaya from the fruit that I got that I made jam out of. And um, let's see what else I have out there. All right, so we're not we don't have the acreage to do a lot of growing, but we do a lot of farmers market stuff. So we 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 support the local farmers around here that, that, that participate at the farmer's market. We, we buy their fruit, their vegetables, mm -hmm. and whatever we can get our hands on, right? And Lisa, you cans uh, the heck out of them. Or you call yeah. that a can, it's actually glass, but she puts them in these jars here. And um, so we do a lot of prepping. Yeah, for sure. And that, it was a trick question. That's why I asked acreage, because I know you guys don't have acreage. That's why I asked. <laughs> but, but, but two orange trees. We have two orange trees yes. and, and, and a pecan tree that puts out. Yeah, this year we should get pecans. The one orange tree in the front is a couple oh. years old, and it has five oranges on it, and it's a okay. orange pineapple. 
Great. And you have almost a quarter of an acre, Sandy, at Suburban Homestead, Wyoming, Arizona. Said. There you go. Yeah, because I don't know the math, but 75, I, 150. I don't either. Let's be real. I know what they told me when I bought the house, and I just go with it. But I'm going to do what Q does. I, I got a neighbor here. My neighbor is retired and doesn't do anything with his yard. So I'm going to borrow his yard to put some uh, some put some uh, plants up, trees, yeah. something. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that that's what this is all about, right? This is all about how can we grow food, even if we have limitations, right? And so that's why I invited guests tonight, because I know you all had great ways to show that you don't have to have hundreds of acres because not everybody has it. Some people are in a condo and have a porch. Some people don't have a porch, you know, and you know me, like you guys down below, you've been watching me for a while, I've been preaching this about you can grow it, whether you grow it indoors, whether you grow it in pots indoors, you know, there's a way to do it, you know? Right. I just want to go to the chat real quick because we got a bunch of people who came in. Um, <clears throat> yes, Lisa is canning everything, not me. <laughs> Lisa down below there. Uh, let's see here. So I know you're like a cannon fool, girl. Tomato sauce. Nice. And what we don't use in the tomatoes, I made tomato she powder. Yes, Love she, it. I grinds, dehydrate it. Yeah, dehydrate, dehydrates and then grinds up all the leftovers. So nothing goes to waste. Good. Good. So, and these are dried or dehydrated tomato slices. And I, oh. So they still look good, but I mean, I, I did them back in March. I sprinkled Leanne's. Italian seasoning wow. on them as they were being dehydrated. Her nice. So I like tomatoes. Jesse doesn't really, not like that. So gotcha. But every once in a while I eat it. But. And another little tip that you guys probably don't know, or maybe you do, maybe in the chat, but you know how cilantro, you can buy cilantro and it, and you eat just enough to whatever you're going to make for tacos or whatever. Wow. And then it usually goes to waste. Well, if, if you dehydrate it, you can save the cilantro. So we need to hydrate the cilantro and you can put this in your ground beef or in your stew or in wherever you want to use cilantro tacos. Yep. Absolutely. Hey, dark Lord, me net. Good to see you. Hey, fairy dragon. Hey, Ricky ventures. Hey, Rick Scott rambling with the brooms. Oh, I have, can I say something real quick? Yep. Let me just get to the bottom of the chat. If you don't mind. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure I got everybody. I always miss people and I can't stand it. Okay, go ahead, Miss Q. I want to say that I'm at the bottom apartment. So I'm not at the top. I'm at the bottom. So I have a vantage to have ground level. And I plant under the stairs of what's going to the top. You go. That's really cool. Yeah. That's awesome. And Q, you don't mind what you don't mind if I say what state you're in, right? No, I don't mind. So Q is in Tennessee and the same Jesse and Lisa, it's okay. They're in Texas. Um, I'm in South Dakota if you're new here. And um, Diane, would you like to talk about what you're growing? Sure. I'm in Pennsylvania and we're on about two and a half acres. And we have... When we moved in here almost 20 years ago, we had no idea how to garden, what to do. Um, I had kids. I was home with them. We needed healthier food to eat. We were eating crap. <laughs> so started from there. And now the garden is 50 by 75, I think. Wow. And I have one milking goat, three little goats that I hope to milk next year. Um, and we're just kind of trying to find ways, but like Jesse and Lisa said, you know, farmer's markets are a really cool way. Bartering is a cool way. Um, that everybody ends up with too much of something in your growing season or something that you maybe don't like as much as you taste thought you were going to swapping stuff is awesome. And that's, we've done a lot of that with our seeds too, because my goal was to stay on a really tight budget. We don't have to anymore, but I, it's kind of a challenge now. 
Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. When I looked at your, um, I don't, know, I don't know if you posted something or, or did I look at your account and I was like, I couldn't believe you, your acreage is similar to mine. Okay. I, looking at your account, I'm sitting there thinking to myself, this woman got acreage. Nope. And then I'm sitting there no. like, now I know why I love you. <laughs> you just, you figure out, and that's, that's one of the joys kind of figuring out that I'm most likely have always been that ADHD kid, not the hyper one, but the, the one who can't stay in a conversation to save your yeah. life. That's actually kind of been a benefit to homesteading because everything is seasonal and you can't get too focused on different things or you get hung up. So it, it, there's always a new idea cooking, whether it's a good one or not, not always, <laughs> but there's always a new idea cooking. Always, always. We redid our pig pen three times. Oh gosh. Because we had the meat pigs. Then we started with Cooney Cooney pigs. Okay. Then we decided to get females and breed. Okay. And then we got a second boar and had to find a place to put them. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So it's like it evolved over time, but what we have now is working and I hate it in a way because <laughs> now we have to change it because I have to separate the two girls that are pregnant, we think. Mm -hmm. And I just talked to my mentor, I call her, which is Rebecca at Halbert Farms on Instagram. And, um, you know, the, the, the girls have been together in the farrowing pen, so to speak, the nursery since the day they knew they were coming to our house together. So they've been together since they were little and Cooney Cooney pigs don't do well by themselves. So Fiona has to move out for four to six weeks ahead of time. So I was trying to figure out, do I need to put her in a place where she can still see Eleanor or will she be okay in her own place without Eleanor? So there's, you know, it's hit or miss here and there. But I think we've decided where we're going to put them finally. But, you know, it's nerve wracking because now you have to put them in a different place. And, then, you know, that's not um, like picking yep. up sticks. <laughs> <laughs> no, animals don't adjust as easily as we would like them to. <laughs> right, right. You know, we toyed with moving the boys around to another place, but the boys house is not large enough because if there's an issue, we have to be able to get in there. Gotcha. Um, not just to clean and all that kind of stuff. So I think we've got a plan set up. We're trying to figure it out, but, but very cool. So you've got a large garden and you've got the goats. That's awesome. If yeah. I may say something also, you know, we didn't start following homesteading communities until I guess, you know, 2020, 2019, yep. 2020, around that, around that time, everybody started watching YouTube more and more. Mm -hmm. And uh, the one thing yep. I think we learned from watching all the homesteading community uh, channels is, uh, you know, where we would waste a lot. I, you know, we didn't, I mean, it was in the back of our mind that you could preserve and you can, you know, save, but we really didn't prep. And since we've been watching homesteading, uh, not only do we say we, 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 whatever we don't eat, either go, it either gets frozen or it'll get uh, canned or, but nothing hardly ever gets thrown away. And we don't have any animals to feed like pigs or anything like that. So, I'm the only pig in the house and, and she feeds me well, but uh, yeah. So we've learned a lot just by watching what you guys are doing. Cause mm -hmm. I mean, we're like, I said, we're just a normal suburban household uh, who just happened to stumble on YouTube a couple of years ago. And, you know, we've been following the homesteading communities uh, because we enjoy them. You know, we, we love supporting them and we've learned a lot. And I mean, I would have never thought I'd see Lisa can chicken or canned tuna, or canned pork, or hamburger. I mean, I got tacos for 10 years here if I want, you know? Yeah. And uh, But I would, we would have never done that in the past. We would have just gone to waste. If the meat didn't get cooked, it would have gone to waste. Times are changing, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, so I just want to go to the chat real quick because a bunch of people came in and there's some comments. Hey, Danny at Wicked Awesome Gardening. Hey there, Mad Acre Farm. Hey, bro, cowgirl, hope you're doing well. Hey, 
Hey, Candid Explorer. Hope you're doing well, Kat. Yeah, since you ain't learning and you watching me. <laughs> and sure, Danny, I would love to be your piggy's mentor when you have your cooney coonies. Hopefully by then I'll know enough to be able to be your mentor. Hey, free handly <laughs> made. <laughs> LG Jesse, says you ain't learning me. watching me. Hey, remind I me, I have a comment then. Her. Go ahead. <laughs> Did somebody have a comment? I said I learned I learned a lot about Sonic from her, so I am I am learning from her. <laughs> I saw that. I saw that. Strawberry seed. Yep. Hey, Barb's and country was, home. Oh, go ahead, Diane. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. It's okay. I was just going to respond to Jesse. I said. I'm, I think it gives us a whole new appreciation when we start sourcing our, I hate to say better quality, but better quality and more precious, whether, whether it's growing it, producing it, or talking to the farmer at the farmer's market, I think we do end up with a deeper appreciation for what's being produced. And that also kind of leads to a lot less waste. Right. Amen. Well yeah. said. Hey, petite. Jean River Homestead, welcome in, welcome in, Klingon Princess. Hello, my dear. Hey, Kadesh Farm Homestead, welcome in. Laureate LG said, "Sponsor needs, uh, excuse me, Sonic needs to sponsor her channel." <laughs> Amen to that. Hey, Matthews Patch, no worries. Dark Lord Minette, thanks for being here. Yeah. Oh, hang on. Sorry, guys. The chat was like moving really, really quick. I'm like, uh, I think I got everybody. If I missed you, I'm going to apologize. Um, so yeah. So for, if you're new here, we have two acres. We're in the Southern Black Hills of South Dakota zone 4B. Finally, uh, June 11th will be our last potential frost date. We don't think we'll have one. It looks good. Um, Stuff's going out. That's all there is to it. The pig pools are out. So that's a good thing. Um, but we are growing in gardens. I'm growing everywhere. I'm trying to grow everywhere. So Ryan is the outdoor gardener, not me. I am not a fan of it. I'll be honest. Don't get offended now. Um, and... So this year, because I'm home, I'm doing the planting. And plus, he's a little discouraged by the fact that when we lived in Connecticut and North Carolina, you could literally scatter seeds and mm -hmm. the ground was so fertile, it just grew. So um, so we're growing. I'm sorry, Jennifer, I didn't mean to offend you. <laughs> but, but we're, you know, so we're growing. I mean, I'm growing in everything that I can. Um, and yes, June 11th is our last potential freeze date, Devin. Good night, Tony Renee. Thanks for being here. <laughs> so, record, so for the record, Lisa, you do have the messiest garden. I do. I will. <laughs> I don't know. I think I could give her a run for her money right now. <laughs> trying to get her some points. <laughs> hey, Lavender for luck. He's talking about a video I put out today. Um, a bunch of us did a collaboration video where we're not going to weed a garden. And we're going to see if it produces just like a, a manicured, beautiful garden would. Oh, wow. Well, geez, <laughs> I, I just had kids pull weeds. Otherwise, I'd jump in on the chat. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we have two acres and we, our land is very sloping. There's a lot of rock because we have a lot of granite rock outcroppings. So they extend into the ground, like for a good point is where I was talking to Ryan about getting hydrants put in so we can get down to um, animals on the back part of the property and we can't, we have to blast. Ew. So we're not doing that. <laughs> um, hey, Lavender for luck, welcome in. And so, but we, that's the thing. Anyone who watches our channel knows that we have done a lot with efficient use of space. And so that's why I wanted to talk to you guys tonight because the reality is, is that it doesn't matter what you have, you can grow something. You may not be able to do your meat chickens because you know it's not allowed in your neighborhood or you may not be able to do this, that or the other thing. 
be crazy like me and do some experiments. Like I did experiments in the greenhouse. Some worked, some failed, you know, and it just, if you don't do it, you'll never know. You guys with me on that? Do you think? Yeah, absolutely. So what are some things that like you tried and you're like, Hey, I'm going to try this. And you were like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe it worked. All of mine. To do. <laughs> yeah. One of mine. <laughs> We've tried them over and over and over. No, I do. The I think it got too hot for lettuce and onion. Yes. Those didn't grow at all. For we me. have too much humidity and too much heat to do to, to deal with, and it's really rough to grow stuff. You get, and then we got a pecan tree that that puts Space out yeah that puts out a ton of shade. So we only have a small portion of a lot that has any sun at all. But I have that same problem. Yeah, our ground is so it's mud and clay. It's clay. Yeah, so that's that, why we went with the grow. Black, we get the call black gumbo. The grow bags. <laughs> Any grow bags. Yeah, misplaced country girl said she's thinking of a small greenhouse in her apartment. Let me tell you, I got tomato plants over here. I don't know if you can see them. That's a video. Yeah, you got one in your house. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I, I've got. Uh, four four sweetheart cherry tomatoes and hydroponics in my house. They've been in there since the beginning of March. Right. You know. Um, how about for you, Q? What's something you tried and you were like, "Wow." Well, I'm still trying it. I have a uh, corn squash for the first time and okra, and they're doing pretty good. But it's it's the part. The hard part is when it start forming the corn, I have to fertilize it uh, so much for the, the kernel to come. Last year I did it in a bucket and um, I got a little corn, but I didn't get the whole corn. So this time I'm trying to stay on fertilizing it. And it's, it's in clay soil too, but what I did was I put a lot of um, compost, cause I do home compost too home compost on top of the clay soil and you will be amazed on all those bugs dig into that clay soil and and loosen it up mm -hmm. do, q do you follow nikki at five dog farm on instagram um that don't ring a bell i will message you her account because she is in tennessee with clay soil and she's had to do a lot of work on it and she's really receptive to answering messages and questions okay she's just darling you will love her yes, she is yep. yeah i'll second that <laughs> yeah i mean she uh, diane and i were in a thread together i'm not going to talk about the conversation but I mentioned something and Nikki was like, day or night, you call me. And I was like, mm -hmm. I'm not going to call and you she in the middle of the night. She and means, she means it. To. <laughs> yeah. We've had conversations at kind of random times too, that she had questions for me or I had questions for her and she's serious. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Our new Lance at five dog farm rocks. Kadesh says, me and Q are 15 minutes from each other. And Nan said that she's got you too. She'll help you with the clay soil. Right. Um, let's see here. Just want to go back. Gar Gather Together Homestead said, last year we planted a lettuce in our main garden. Oh, hold on. I lost it. I got to put it on the screen. Q, it's going to look like it's blocking you out. No offense. <laughs> Cause I can't move the location. Hang on. Okay. Oh, wrong one. I'll get it together sometime guys. You know how that goes. It was gathered together. Basically they were saying that they've been planting lettuce. They fail a lot. Our lettuce is on the third planting. Now the first two times sprouted and didn't do anything. Yeah, and now I grow hydroponically. I grow lettuce all year round inside with the cracky method. And this year I've tried two different seeds after I did the bok choy. And most of you guys saw the bok choy. It was unbelievable how well it did. Lettuce? Really? Looks horrible. And I'm like, I'm the one who told everybody to do this and it won't grow now. 
And I always thought that lettuce grew in colder climates, you know, like, I don't know, like the great Northwest up there in Washington and Oregon and where it's cooler, especially along the coast there, you know, where they get a lot of moisture. So, it does well when it's cool, like earlier spring and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Cause I know Casey at Ormsby farms was talking about not being able to grow lettuce. And I mean, it's, hot in georgia mm -hmm. you know um Di diane what are you what's some things that you tried to grow and you said oh wow <laughs> well i squash i the first time i tried squash i it was kind of funny i put in six spaghetti squash seeds this is a few years ago we lost count somewhere around 65 spaghetti squashes. <laughs> we couldn't give them away. Um, I can't grow an onion. I cannot grow huh. a decent sized onion because, and I've come to find out, we actually have a new pest. The joys of Pennsylvania is things come in on the coast with all the imports and we get like spotted lantern fly. I don't know if you guys have heard of that one. Um, it's everywhere. Spotted lantern fly. Um, and we have allium leaf miner. So I can't grow alliums. I can't grow garlic and I can't grow onions unless I have them undercover. And I'm way too lazy a gardener for that. <laughs> I totally get it. I like, like set it and forget it. Is that exactly. Like a fly that carries his own light or what? I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Paul Revere. Well, we call so it, it fireflies down here in Texas. I don't know if it's the same thing. Yeah, so no, it's a it's a newer pest that came in on imports and it actually could really affect the fruit crops. We're not too far, terribly far from some of the main fruit crops in in Pennsylvania, some of the huge huge orchards. And they're they're really concerned. Um they eat Alanthus or Tree of Heaven and they eat a few other things too um they damage some of it and they damage some of it less i like most pests really but it's wow. and it's an ugly little thing oh it's an ugly little bug creepy yeah hey hey joe serrano and i'm gonna bring up we have a guest backstage our other guest hi leanne hi yeah. So everybody who knows Leanne, but Diane, this is Leanne with the Mennonite Farmhouse. Who's also a Pennsylvanian. Oh, very cool. Uh, so when she spotted, I was talking about the spotted lantern fly. Exactly. Yeah. You guys no. deal with it? We don't have it in our area, but it's so he heavily educated by Penn State. How can you not hear about it? Exactly. Yep. Yeah, no, they're all over. They're on our maple trees and that kind of stuff at this point, too. And they make a mess, but they don't seem to damage them. Just like the gypsy moss. Do they attack one type exactly. of crop more than others? Or do yes, they... but I couldn't tell you off the top of my head which ones. I hear there's bad on fruit trees. And that's what I was understanding, too. Or just any kind of fruit tree. Apple, cherry. Well, we're, Pennsylvania is known for their apple trees yeah where i'm from in the peaches and i think that's all we really grow yeah peaches and apples around here on trees pretty much pretty much here too leanne we'll have to touch base and see if we're close to each other i think you're closer to the coast than i am but you probably fair enough <laughs> <laughs> joe serrano said hello lisa and everybody here in the chat and where speak of the end leanne appears <laughs> Uh, hey, Camilla, living a rogue life. What's that, Jesse? Better late than never. That's right. No, she was busy. She's a farmer's wife. That's what happens. So, um, Leanne. Yes. <laughs> we were talking about things like what what is something that we experimented with, tried and grew, and then we were like, oh, wow, that worked out pretty cool. Well, she was saying about summer squash, and I'm thinking about 2017 when we planted maybe eight or ten just regular summer squash. Yeah. <laughs> it was the year that it rained and rained and rained. 
I can't. Yeah, I haven't planted it since. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how I am with the spaghetti squash. Yeah. But interesting. See, we just plant things that are necessities, like stock vegetables. Yeah. But this year we're trying to um, grow Indian corn for the first time and glass corn. That's pretty exciting. And I'm hoping that works out for us. And remember, if, for the people who have watched my video on my garden, I um, talked about how my husband went behind my back and planted this zucchini and cucumbers. <laughs> well, the ground was a little crusty and they didn't come up. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was watching Life with Belinda, Blinda and Chuck, and or Chuck and Belinda, and... Um, Chuck was complaining about the squash and, you know, like, oh, we got so much squash. And I was like, you know what I do? I just make a very large squash casserole and that uses a bunch of it and it's gone. Do you put crackers in yours? <laughs> yes. And do you Love it. In fact, I use more um, squash than it calls for. And then I double the liquid part and the cracker part and it turns out excellent. I'll okay, venue your chicks. I thought you were going to say you just feed it to the chickens. And that way no. you eat it. You, you run about eat it that way. No. No. If it's if it's good in good show. condition, we're eating it. So no worries. Um, so let's talk about, and I know it's kind of a hard subject sometimes to talk about because of the terms we're not allowed to use, right? So we're not allowed to say the big cinnamon vanilla word, which is when the world changed in 2020. Gotcha. Um, we're not allowed to say that here. So, um, so let you know, earlier Jesse and Lisa were talking about, uh, Jesse said, you know, oh, I never thought Lisa would be canning this stuff. We wasted a lot of the stuff. How has life changed for everybody since that time? And have you taken steps to add more to what you're growing? Q, you want to start us off? <clears throat> okay. So, well, I evolved totally. I'm scared of bugs. I'm still scared of bugs. I'm a future beekeeper. I don't like bees. Um, <laughs> it's just that it's about uh, surviving. <laughs> and that's point blank. I mean, I, mm -hmm. everything's going on and most people in my, my area, they don't believe anything's happening. And it's just amazing um, to be around people that's just like sleep. Uh, so I, I'm preparing. I'm, I'm, I'm preparing and I'm going to be ready. Nice. How about for you, Diane? I, First, I have to laugh, Q. I actually have bees and still don't particularly like bees. And I work with them and I still just, I can't do it barehanded for sure. Um, the biggest thing for me was the kids were home during that time. And that gave us a chance to actually keep on top of some of what we wanted to do. Um the garden was definitely more productive that year, but it was actually about the same size. So it just, I had hands instead of having to try to do it all. We were able to kind of spread the work out a little bit, which was a big deal. That was huge. Absolutely. Absolutely. How about you, Jesse and Lisa? Uh, what was the original question? <laughs> What's changed? <laughs> Lisa's canning everything. <laughs> well, you know, since the the big uh, event, you know, we we were we were already working from home. Our, our our company was working from home before I retired, so it gave us a lot of time to think about things. But uh, I think um, the fact that you know, we started watching YouTube a lot. We started following uh, homesteading channels. We kind of changed our focus. I mean, before that, I mean, the only thing Lisa knew how to make was reservations. Now she can make a ton of stuff. <laughs> oh, no, you did not. <laughs> I'm serious. I swear. It's okay, Lisa. Me too. <laughs> the only thing she knew how to make was holy water. 
she would put it on the pot and boil the hell out of it, you know? And that's, you know, but now, <laughs> she's going to talk in a minute. Now, I mean, no, we have a totally different mindset and focus about it. Lisa, there's a reset button right behind his head. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, oh, my gosh. But, uh, no, she, she, she doesn't like to cook. Now, she's a awesome baker. She can bake, yeah. you know, to doomsday. But when it came to cooking, she just didn't want to do it. That's why I said I, I don't care to cook. Yeah, she can bake. But I like love to bake. Makes, yes. And then some people think it's the same thing, but no, it's not. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. Two totally different it is things. Not the same. No. Now, since we've been, since I started canning, watching Leanne's uh, channel, and um, started canning, it's like I'm filling the shelf, and I'm like, I don't know if I want to use it yet. <laughs> I mean, it's sitting there it's so pretty and it's getting full. But you but, do, yeah, you do wonder who, should we use it? Should we, you know, should, should we, we eat it? it you know, or no, or is, is wait some, until we have a hurricane only and yeah. lose power. But, but I've been stocking up like on flour and I'll, um, the little five pound bags of flour and I will vacuum pack it and then mark on there what, when I vacuum packed it. So I've, and it's rock hard you know, in that, because it takes all the air out of it. But, you know, we've been prepping a little bit and just gathering. So now I make, we don't buy bread at the store anymore. I make bread in like two times a week now. And it's very good as toast. <laughs> and we're not only relying on canned goods, you know, like this. We're, we're also, we have the prepper packages, you know, the kinds you can get at Costco. The big yep. So we have a bunch of those tubs. We, we're, we're, uh, we're trying to, I mean, obviously you can't predict what's going to happen, but we want to at least have something. And our main concern here is hurricanes. So we can yep. go, we can have a hurricane here and we can go nine days, 10 days without power before they even get back to. And uh, you mentioned something about uh, the, the, the plants earlier about what affects, you know, we, if we have a hurricane season or during hurricanes, if we have a hurricane come through here, it can wipe everything out because you'll have 75 mile an hour winds. Yep. And we've lost, we've lost a whole crop of pecans before where we had, we were going to get about 50 yeah. or 60 pounds of pecans and the wind just bloomed to the next neighborhood. I mean, it was that yeah, bad. It just took them all off. So we, we, we battle that all the time. And I mean, anybody in the Gulf Coast, Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi, every one of us have this battle the same uh the same thing. A, mm -hmm. yeah those big storms absolutely and it's ironic how like the storms take shape and cause different issues for us it's you know we have wildfire season because mm -hmm. of the lightning strikes in the in the forest service land and or wherever um and we also right now we're in hail season some of you were on that night we had that live and we had golf ball sized hail yeah. Um, we had a large hail, um, not quite as large as that on Saturday. Um, but yeah, it's just crazy stuff that happens, you know, and yet other people have tornadoes and hurricanes and it's just, it's crazy across the country. How about for you, Leanne? Well, the size of the garden has not changed. It's always been 3,200 square feet. And I think I've always just been, you know, since I've been married, I always want to make sure my pantry is stocked because with farming, you never know when your next paycheck is coming. You don't know. I mean, that's, that's just what my parents taught me being raised on a farm. You just don't know when you're going to actually be in the black to have a paycheck. Okay. So marrying a farmer, that's what I did. We're, we're going to put up food. So... I don't think that has, I mean, 2020 has changed that attitude for me. It's just now with rising prices, now it's making me want to step on my game mm -hmm. and learn how to take the wheat straight from the field and mill it myself. You know? That's a great point. That's a really great point. Like, yeah, I'm starting to be aware of what we need to buy now because it might we might not be able to afford it in six months like i just saw our fuel bill today and i <clears> got <throat> a heart attack yeah it, it's four yep. times what we paid two years ago i believe that 
Yeah, it's insanity. I mean, I, I tell people when we bought a pallet of feed, hey, Don Ray B., um, when we bought a pallet of pig feed, when we had the meat pigs right now, the ironic part is the meat pigs went through a lot of pig feed, right? Compared to my coonie coonies. Um, but we bought a pallet of pig feed and that netted us, it was 14 and change a bag. Wow. That pig feed, when we bought it and I'm Leanne remembers this cause we were actually chatting about it. I had I had to leave my local feed store, which killed me. But I had to because couldn't afford it. Mm -hmm. So we went around to um, all these different stores. We went to a, a big box store, which I wasn't thrilled about, but they gave us a deal and they said they'd give us a discount on a pallet. And a pallet lasts us months and months. I mean, like forever, right? On the maintenance, uh, Cooney Cooney pigs on a maintenance feed low grain um oh we lost leanne she'll be back so anyway long story short we go and we get the feed and they quoted us let me just say it. i want to make sure i say it right hang on it was going to be 18 dollars a bag no excuse me 17 dollars a bag and we would get it for 16 and change a bag if we bought the ton. So we ordered it. I offered to pay for it. They would not take payment. They said I could pay for it at the time. Okay, fine. Two weeks later, I go to pick it up. Yeah. It's $19 a bag. And I paid 17 and change with the discount. Hmm. Now it's over $20 a bag for pig and sow. Cause I had to switch mine over to pig and sow now that they're, um, they were breeding. Uh, Leanne's back. Hang on. Sorry. My magic mouse is not so magical. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, and in the meanwhile, I went into tractor supply and I'm going to say it because I went in there and they wanted to charge me shipping for a pallet of feed that was going to be delivered to their store. And I was going to have to deliver home. No, no. no. So I left because I wasn't paying that. No one has ever charged me a delivery fee unless it delivered to my house. So, and I'm talking, it would have been like $1,200 wow. for a pallet of feed. And I think this one cost us 700, but how long, how long does that last a pallet? So, well, you guys have been with us for longer. So to give you a gauge of it, we bought, because I have a list. I know you're going to think I'm crazy, but I have a list. Mm -hmm. So in 2021 in February, we had the two meat pigs. Sherman came in March. The girls came in May. So it's primarily the meat pigs. We bought a pallet on February 27th. We bought one on June 30th. Now, end of August, the meat pigs went to be processed. So we just bought the expensive one on March 18th, 2022. That's how long wow. it went. Wow. But understand, we knew that we were going to expand the herd and we needed to get the feed here because when the piglets are off, um, when the piglets are off their mamas, right, and they're off the creep feed, they're going to be eaten a lot until they get sold. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to have that on hand. Hey, old Swedes. No worry. Hey, Jilly Belly Acres. Hey, life with Linda and Chuck. Hi to anybody I miss coming in, but just to give you a heads up, I mean that, but we, if we're going to store something, that's what we store is the pig feed because I don't have a lot of room to do that, but I can fit a pallet in my garage. Thankfully, knock on wood, I don't have an issue with mice. And that's probably because my neighbor has a, a outdoor cat who hangs out out here. Um, and then chicken and turkey feed, we don't go through as fast. I, ideally, I'd love to have all of that. But, you know, it's, it's just hard. So like, we try to stock up on things as much as we can, we try to prep things as much as we can. Yeah. Um, I really try to buy in, in bulk. I know I was, I don't know, was it Leanne? Was it you that I was telling that I went to Sam's club? I had posted oh, yeah. on Instagram. I couldn't believe that $400 for a grocery cart of stuff that basically was basic needs. 
It was not processed food. It was cases of canned goods like vegetables just to have on hand. Um, no meat whatsoever. None. Yes. And it was tiny. It was Imagine so... if he did have meat. Yeah, meat has skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. I saw it... a three pound chuck roast at my local grocery store for $33 this week. Are you yeah. serious? That's crazy. I'm serious. Crazy. Like, I was like, what? Well, I think we switched to the other white meat, pork. <laughs> yeah. Cheaper. Mm -hmm. But at least I'm going to ask you a question about your feed. So uh, if you could not afford the feed, if you couldn't buy any more of that feed that you want to give your, would that, would that be the end? Would you have to, would you have to process the, the pigs in or would you re resort to something else? That would be my last resort is to process them. Right. Because there are some people that, that, that uh, raise pigs just on slop. And I'm not saying that you yeah. have, you guys would do that, but there are people who just slop their, their, their pigs. And I was wondering, well, if you couldn't get seed or feed or whatever, would you resort to doing that before you process them, especially if they weren't full grown? I would try to find something that I could mix together, whether it was a corn mixture or um, I know some people do it. I am a believer in full nutrition. I don't just feed my pigs whatever is on my countertop. I never have and I never will. And I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying for me, mm -hmm. if I have to eat that animal one day, I don't want that animal eating moldy food. I don't want that animal eating garbage. So like yeah. I will give, give them fruits and vegetables, which is what's good for um, Cooney Cooney pigs. I don't give them meat. Um, I'm one of those weirdos who Googles everything before I feed it to them because I'm not going to feed something to somebody and they, they die on me. I mean, that's the thing. I had moldy, our last bale of hay, I had a toss in the trap, in the compost bin. Cause it was moldy and I won't, will not feed that to my animals. Now I know better to not buy any this time of year. I should have bought it all last year um, when it was cut. So that way it wouldn't go moldy, but I can tell you right now, I would find alternative sources of vegetables and fruit. I think that would be more money than the grain quite, quite honestly. Um, but I would do whatever I could to keep them. But eventually, if I couldn't feed them appropriately, then I would let them go because I don't think it's appropriate to feed them garbage. That's well, I me. That, I can say that since 2020, the one thing that we've changed is uh, our buying habits. So, you know, before we wouldn't go, we'd go to Costco and we may get a package of water. Uh, we may get some other stuff. But now every time we go to Costco, we get a package of water. Whether we use it or not, because we don't want 2020 to happen. To mason jars. You know, when we find these on sale, Walmart or wherever we can find, we, we get a, a case or two. Because you just never know if you're going to be able to go. Not that we're hoarding. We're just trying to take advantage of the opportunity to buy, buy it at a, good, at a good price. Agreed. Agreed. I'm going to bring up a guest that we have backstage. <laughs> and that's the Blue Pixie. Mm -hmm. So everybody, if you're not familiar with Blue, this is Blue. Don't call her Pam. <laughs> um, yes, Carla, you can ferment pig feed. And so what I do is I have a five-gallon bucket. I don't like to keep it in my house because I find that when I, I – I'm just going to say this. I keep one, one bucket in my feed, and I don't ferment a lot at one time. So what I do is I take a scoop, put it in water, make it the porridge-like consistency, and I feed it to the pigs. It's usually a day's worth of feed for them, and then the next night I start over again. The only reason why I do that is because when I've covered the bucket, I found that mold develops on the cover, and I don't want the mold in there. So that's why I've not gone to the mason jars or anything like that but I use the five gallon bucket, but I also have four pigs and I'm going through the feed. So soaking it. And then I also throw alfalfa pellets in there. We got a huge bag for free. Um, and I throw those in there and that helps to give them protein as well. So yes, Q, of course. Okay. 
one, this is my first time uh, doing a live uh, on my phone and it's about to die. But um, research pigeon peas because I heard that a lot of people are making that uh, alternative for feed. It's, it's, a, it's a pea, but it grow like a tree. They say it's real pro prolific. Um, and it could be a substitute for feed and you can grow it yourself. But I want to let everybody know out there that if you don't have um, if you don't have animals, check around to your local butcher shops. That's very important when it comes to all this stuff happening. And make sure that, I mean, I don't have a green thumb, but I'm growing. So just take the initiative to try, try, try again. You might fail, go, go again. You know until you succeed and you will do it just like everybody else in here but y'all be blessed i um enjoy um everybody on the panel and i'll probably be in the comments on my computer but see y'all later thanks for being here q we appreciate you so much it was nice to meet you have a great night you'll see me again <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I see there's some stuff going on in the chat. So the, you know, the the farm, um, the farm, the fermented feed is good for your your animals' guts. Um, it's got a lot of healthy stuff for them and everything. So whether you ferment it one day, two days, three days, whatever you do, um, it, you know, I can smell my bucket in the morning. It's already turning into grain alcohol. <laughs> yum yum yum. <laughs> um, <laughs> And the pigs love it. <laughs> and the problem with that is? <laughs> yeah, they love it. They love it. Although it's funny now that I have them on my front lawn in the new setup with the uh, electric net fencing, it is so funny because they're just, they're, they're not, they don't have that institutionalized mentality where they're standing by the fence like this. She have the bucket? She coming over? <laughs> What's going on? Now they're like, they go, Okay, see you later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're having fun with the grass. Hey, Andy, welcome in Brooklyn's honeybees. The goats do that too, Lisa. It's it's kind of funny when we rotate because I do the same thing Lisa does with fencing as, as I have electric net, net fitting, f fencing <laughs> for the goats and our meat chickens. And that too, each day that they get a fresh spot, you don't hear a peep out of them. Yeah, it's so true. It's so true. I just moved the fence last night for the girls and we'll have to reconfigure it again. Like I said, when we get um, Fiona in her new building, because we want her to, otherwise she'll follow Eleanor in at night. So we have to make sure of that. Hey, Blue. Hi. <laughs> um, I want to go to you, but I just want to tell the mods, hey, mods, take a break relax and enjoy. If anybody wants a link, just type link in all caps and we can get that link for you. But that way, um, they can all, um, you know, take a, re take a relaxing break. Monica said she let Peter, that's one of her pigs out in the pasture the other day. He disappeared for hours. It got dark and we yelled snacks and he came running. <laughs> Tonight I called Grant and I called him and he was all the way on the back part of the property. And I told Ryan to look cause Ryan was on the porch. Grant came tearing up, tearing up. Cause he heard that bucket. And I was like, come on, Grant. He's a <clears throat> good night, Rebecca. But oh, I love it. I love every minute. So Pam, tell us what you're growing this year. Okay. Um, well, we've just moved. So I'm incredibly behind, but we managed to move all my trees and my garlic that I'd grown in containers and stuff like that. So some of the herbs survived, some of them didn't. A little bit upset about that, but, you know. Um, but the garden we are going to be working on this weekend, so that's a good start. And it's not too late to put in the courgettes slash zucchinis. So they're going in this weekend because I can't live without them because I'm an addict. <laughs> Do you mind saying where you're living, you know, broadly? Um, I'm in Yorkshire in England at the moment. 
<laughs> Do you have zones over there like we have zones? Not really, but we are the equivalent <laughs> of 8B, I believe. Really? A, A, 8B, yeah. I'll have to look that up. Because, mm. you know, that's a lot of zones above me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Sorry? Wouldn't it be below you? If you're in 4B? Yeah. I don't know. We're nine, I think. Nine. I'm not the outdoor gardener. I told you that. Up towards like Texas, Oklahoma border, I think would be eight, maybe. Capone yeah, Cabin yeah. said zone 8A. Hey, Kristen. Yeah. Yeah, see, I, I don't know, Leanne. Sorry. You're right, though, because Canada is five, right? Five something. Um, we're one zone three. above the equator. I thought they are three because Thorhaven is three. I think, um, and um, me and you acres, huh? No idea. <laughs> Misplaced country girl is 6B. Well, do we have um, any Canadians in the house? Everybody, throw your zones in the chat. Uh, Danny at Wicked Awesome Gardening wants to know, hey, Green Granny 2, Denise Passell, welcome in. Look, Carla at Living a Rogue Life is 9B. Belly Acres said they're 5B under me. I'm 4B. Rochelle in Toronto is 5B. Don Ray is 6B in West Virginia. Capone Cabin is in Boston. Old Swedes is 4B. Vineyard Chicks is zone six. Wicked Awesome is 6B. I just want to go back up because I saw something about Jesse's, Jesse's in the Twilight Zone. <laughs> <laughs> Brenda at Redbird says, I don't know my zone. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know mine before YouTube. Of course, I keep moving. That's the problem. Um. You can move right down the road from me. I have a great farm for you to buy. I know. It's out of my price range, though. Jesse can afford it. He can buy it for you. <laughs> Thanks, Jesse. Hey, as long as he'll take a hot check. Okay, here it is. <laughs> Wicked well, they're, they're a retired army. I don't think they will. <laughs> Wicked Awesome wants to know, is it possible to make pesto with just six garlic scapes? Mm. If you break down the proportions, yeah. I can't see why not. Yeah. Just add more cheese and it'll be good. Add more cheese is always good. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm this is why I look the way I do because of the more cheese. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Cheese addict. <laughs> Total <Same> cheese addict. <laughs> yeah, Jilly yeah, says it, I'm was, it was so nice to be here. I'm gonna duck out as well. Thank you for having me. Diane, thanks so much for being here. We really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was All nice right. to meet everybody. Have a great night. You too. Thanks. Bye. And Diane it's, is like Leanne. It's really late by her. Yeah. It, it's, yeah. If you need to go to bed, Leanne, go ahead. Go. No. It's okay. I'm not, using I'm, not using, I'm not using toothpaste yet, so I'm good. <laughs> So, yeah, it was good to have Diane on. Um, so life has changed, right? Everybody's doing things that they never did before. Everybody's doing more of the things they used to do before. People are growing. Um, as you all know, I'm a strong proponent of grow something, right? What were you looking at me when you said that, Lisa? People are growing. Because <laughs> I'm growing right there with you, Jesse. If the shoe fits. <laughs> if the shoe fits. <laughs> yeah, no worries, Dawn Ray. Do what you got to do. I understand it is late by you. Um, so, you know, a lot of people might say, well, what's the point of growing my own food because I can't grow at all or I don't have the space or, you know, I don't know. There's uh, lots of things to say, right? Yeah, just grow something. Yeah. Go ahead, Lisa. Say more stuff. about that. Yeah. Oh, no, I would say just grow something. I mean, we, I didn't have anything. And then, um, you know, we watched Joe at Garden State Gardener and, you know, we were winning some seeds. And 
I'm like, okay, I'm going to go and I'm going to try. And we've got some grow bags and I've got the seeds out there. And, and she's growing inside. She's got plants everywhere. Well, I like plants, but yeah. I mean, the ones inside are just regular house plants. But, you know, and I've got, I'm proud of myself because I have peppers growing and I have tomatoes fixing to grow out of the blossoms. And of course, my onions and my lettuce didn't grow, but that's all right. And I got cucumbers. I think they're going to still grow, but the leaves are turning kind of brown. So I don't know if it's too much sun or I don't know. You know, it's, it's a learning experience for me, but try something. Absolutely. What, what made you try something though? Like anybody can answer that, but what made you finally say, I'm going to try something, right? You can say you won the seeds, right? You can say that, um, all that stuff, but the reality of it is, or I'm speaking for myself, I've done things before and never used them. True. And it takes a lot to then go through with it and buy the dirt or buy the pots or whatever. It takes a lot to actually go through with it. So what spawns you into wanting to actually put the seed in the dirt? I think just watching watching the other, the more channels we watched, Rochelle up in uh, Canada, Frampton Gardener, you know, she she was using grow bags also, and she has used them. And so that we kind of looked into that. And it's like, well, we can do this and we can do that. I had seeds in my refrigerator in the garage from 1999 and the year 2000. I'd, and I can't tell you if any of those are growing out there. They did, they did uh, germinate, but I don't know if they are the ones that died or not. But let me tell you something else. We watched a video by Bunky on Bunky's Garden, a vineyard chick. Mm -hmm. And we said to each other, if she can do it, we can do it. You know, it was one of them kind of like an epiphany. He said, yeah. if she can do it, we can do it. And this girl's, what, 10 years old, 11 years old, and she's growing all kind of stuff. I said, if she can do it, we can do it. So we just started. So just, yeah, accumulation of all, watching all these different channels. Not saying that like, some of her age couldn't do it because she just was an inspiration. It was like, wow, yeah. this girl's all in, you know. She's like, and, and we're sitting here looking at each other saying, what, what are we waiting on? Let's just do this, you know? And then you people right. get people like Glenn and Jessica who got a beautiful little uh, 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 garden that they, they just planted. That, that just It's just so inspiring to see people go out there and, and put stuff in the ground and, and, and see it produce and, and then hopefully have enough to can and, and, and share with others and family and so yeah. forth. And that's what we do. We, we can and we share. We can and we give. We, we, it's not that we, we don't keep some for us, but – it's about giving to others and it's about, uh, you know, showing them, Hey, look what we grew. Look what we, we made. We Making sure your family, even your extended family is taken care of. And the YouTube folks are our extended family as well. Not just mom and dad. We're talking about, I mean, we've grown, uh, to, 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 you know, like and love a lot of people in, on, in the YouTube community, especially the homestead uh, community. So, you know, and we want to share what, what, you know, what we know, what we have, and there's nothing wrong with that. Or at least I don't think there is. No, not at all. Not at all. I mean, you know, like I said, I've said it a million times. I don't like the outdoor gardening. It's just not my thing. You know, would I like to just go out there and harvest? Yeah, I'd love it. Yeah. You, you got know, beautiful nails too. You know, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you see that my fingers in the, um, in the pheasant video coming up, <laughs> I was oh. like, Oh, this is really gross. <laughs> anyway. Um, but here's the thing. It's grow time, right? It's grow time and it's grow time in many different ways. This is the time of the season. They talk about make hay when the sun shines. Mm -hmm. Well, for us, right, that's 12 pheasants in the back, 30 something meat chickens in the back. I got five turkeys in the back. Why? Because they're all going to be here temporarily. They're going to be processed. They're going to go to freezer camp and it's all about this is the time to grow, grow, grow. And the same thing with the garden, right? The garden, it's time to grow. And in fact, I took that, um, for those of you who watched my Instagram, I got a free hippo sandbox that I planted the red noodle pole beans. And I'm probably getting the name wrong from Kristen at Lazy Sea. I planted them in there. And I put them in our hay rack because that way my chickens can't get to them. 
I had an extra cucumber plant. I put that in a five gallon bucket. That way they can grow outside the greenhouse, get enough sun and the chickens don't eat them because the reality of it is the chickens eat everything. <laughs> you know, I even grew sunflowers this year because I wanted to have some sunflowers for the chickens. I wanted to be to put, a, put away some sunflower seeds for the chickens. So I have like six or seven um, sunflowers that I had seeds for. And I said, let me throw them in the ground, see how it goes. Now I've got them blocked off from the chickens now. I'll probably have to put chicken wire up the whole barn for crying out loud. But it's, it's that feeling compelled to grow something. And for me, once you grow something and you guys can answer this, but once you grow something for yourself and you taste it, or you go to the farmer's market and you make home goods with them and you taste it, you're hooked. Yep. You're hooked because they're amazing. Real quick, I just want to say Slava at Kitchen Garden Therapy is only 10 friends away from 1,000 friends. So if you don't know Slava at Kitchen Garden Therapy, I've got her uh, link. I'm going to pin it. Uh, I can't pin it, but I just put it in the chat. So it's right there. You'll be able to see it. But what do you guys think about that? Like growing your own food, making your own food, all that kind of stuff, buying more whole good food. Blue, you want to start us off? Yeah. Um, I started growing because I was a single parent and um, one of my kids couldn't eat peas or corn if we would bought it frozen or canned or anything like that. It would just make him vomit straight away. But I started growing them in our back garden and he could eat them straight off the vine, straight off the stalk, and it wasn't a problem. He didn't have that reaction. So that kind of started me growing, um, and that was 30 years ago. <laughs> Good night, Danny at Wicked Awesome. Good night, Carla. Uh, <laughs> so my backyard at that point, because I was living in Australia, just turned into this massive, um, massive vegetable garden. Um, and then, and the kids would go in and just help themselves, which was such a new thing for them. Um, and my youngest, who was a toddler at the time, was just literally going in and helping himself and he wouldn't eat what you put on in front of him at the table, but he would be happy to run into the vegetable garden and just help himself to whatever he could find. So that to me made it worth it. And then we moved to a small two acre property, um, which had an established orchard in it and a paddock down the back. And we had room for poultry and a couple of animals. Um, and I did everything from scratch there and it made such a difference to them and to me as well. And it was really cool. And I was hooked from there. Um, so when Tani and I got together and there wasn't a garden, it was everything's in pots. I don't care. Everything's in pots. Yeah. But it's still a big learning curve because it was a completely different climate, completely different um, temperatures, different seasonal growing. It was all turned about. So everything that I'd done in the last three or four years has been experimenting really um, to figure out exactly what's going to grow where. And I'm the kind of person that if you tell me I can't grow it, I'm going to do it just because you've told me I can't do it. So I grew pistachio trees in your Good night, Scott. Mm -hmm. So just because I could literally – flip people off and say don't tell me it can't be done because it can you just have to find a way and it yeah. can be done so yeah that that's me and I grow things that tend to be more expensive um and to buy or mm -hmm. not as easy to find in the supermarkets or the farmers markets and places like that so that 
um, we have that variety because I'm used to having that variety. Tanny's not. And trying to get him to eat a vegetable is like trying to pull teeth from chicken. It's just dumb. <laughs> not the easiest job in the world. <laughs> So, yeah, because we have limited space, we do try and go for the things that um, we can preserve and are more expensive to purchase rather than things like onions and potatoes and things like that. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Hey, Ariella, welcome in. Um, that's really cool. I really like to hear stuff like that. You know, it's just so mm. important. And yeah. I just wanted to mention to the old Swedes farm wants you to check out their all playlist. They're about 400 <laughs> hours away from their 4k hours. <laughs> so if you want to check them out. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, I can't, I can't go one night without a sign. Come on. Now let's go and do another one. <laughs> How about for you, Leanne? I think when I lived on my own, I, I struggled just because I just assumed you needed to have a rototiller to till up the land. You needed shovels and all kinds of stuff. Well, living paycheck to paycheck to paycheck, you can't do that so working in a restaurant you know you, you take the food home so now living with my husband now i'm blessed that i just tell him to do something and you know it's it's already done so what's that yeah. like <laughs> <laughs> that's wrong that's it's so a wrong <laughs> no, well, I, no, I can't complain. I can't complain. It's hey, a blessing. Simply jam. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, we've had one argument about how many cucumbers to put in the in the garden this year. He's like, we need more relish. I'm like, we have over 20 pints of relish in the basement. Seriously, how many do we really need? Because that means that's how many cheeseburgers and fries casseroles every month? Yeah. Just give him a jar. I don't have any roast. Do you have any roast? <laughs> Look at Monica. Monica's so funny. Is that a thing? <laughs> I relish the thought. I mean, you know, hey. <laughs> but don't bump. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, a thousand bottles of relish. <laughs> I like a thousand bottles of relish. I take it. I love relish. Sweet relish. Love it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. For, for me, it was, I've been, I always overplant. Like when Ryan would plant seedlings, he would plant so many. He would, you know, be smart about it. Me, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and you know we've got all we've got all these seedlings and that's why i'm like i'm not getting rid of them we're growing them you know because we've not had any luck with cucumbers so far so i've got two in the greenhouse i've got a backup plan for them now on that hay rack yeah kitty wants it on the show <laughs> this year and, is the first the year i actually under the desk <laughs> <laughs> Leanne, you're saying, "Hey, Little Creek." This is the first year we actually were able to sell seedlings that we started. Like Howard's, like, "Oh, they're never going to be good enough for people." Well, I proved them wrong and sold them, you know, and it covered the cost of this, you know, the soil that we bought to start them, and yeah. Where exactly. Well, that's like, one of the other things that we find at the farmer's market. There's a lot of people there at the farmer's market that sell seedlings or pepper plants, uh, flowers even. Uh, but they have a ton of starters, and you, you can get all kind of stuff for farmer's markets. Now, I, I'm, I can't speak for every other state in Texas, 
we have a ton of food here. I mean, and you just have to go and get it. They're talking about seed math and chicken math. I have a problem with pig math. <laughs> there's seed math? Yeah, I didn't know there was seed math either, but I know there's pig math. I totally have pig math issues. Seed math. She's got seeds from 20 years ago. Seed math. I mean, that's borderline horny. Yeah, see, I can get my husband on her. I beg your pardon? <laughs> no, no, wait. Did that come out wrong? I, I'm going to give you a chance to say that differently. Okay. Howard has this thing about seeds are not good to keep from year to year. Okay. So when I tell him that, that these big bolts that YouTubers have with their photo containers and all that, he's like, no, there's no need to do that. So he so he wants you to buy new seeds every year, more or less. Well, oh. save seeds. We don't we don't we need don't <laughs> buy that many. You only need a few of each crop. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, because you said you grow very basic stuff, so that way you can can it and everything like that. That makes total sense. So um, I, only had, I only had these seeds because when our son came along, we started we did a little garden out behind our garage and that's why I had all these seeds. So when we didn't garden, it was, I think we only did like maybe one, maybe two years. I just put them in the refrigerator in the garage and just forgot about them, put them in Ziploc baggies. And so they were there. And then I went and looked at them this year and it's like, wow, these are, these are old. I wonder if they'll germinate. Yeah. Did you know you could buy seeds for 20 cents? <laughs> yeah i know it hey nino and lo hey uh bar on forage welcome in i just want to go back Let's see. Here. yep jan is here jerry riggs is here thank you so hello you're doing a giveaway right now <laughs> um good night urban gardening chronicles but weibel i think it's weibel family adventures and Forgive me if I get it wrong, but I think it's Brandy. Um, she had a question, and I know somebody can answer it, and I think it's on squash. Let me just go back to it. Some of them did lavender for luck, but I couldn't tell you if any of them are still alive outside or not. And I'm sorry. <laughs> go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I just say I'd, I had mixed them up. And sorry for the guests on the bottom on the panel. I tried to move it. I can't. Uh, she has a garden question. I only get flowers on squash, mm -hmm. but never any squash the past few years. That has to do with male and female, right? So you have to hand pollinate. Can somebody speak to that and yeah. if they know about it? It's, <laughs> um, the male flowers only have a stem on them, and they're a little bit smaller than the females. The females actually are quite large flowers and you need to take the male flower and pollinate the female flowers or and start growing on... some, something that's got flowers on it that's going to attract the pollinators so they'll do it for you. Good night, Miss Place Country Girl. Thanks for being here. <laughs> and it depends on how many plants you have. You just can't have yeah. one. Yeah. I actually thought I saw Tony at our cabin in the woods do it. Mm. Let me just look real quick. Let me just look real quick. Oops. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I think it's our cabin in the woods. Yeah. Our cabin in the woods. Uh, their video, I think it was from today, hand pollinate our garden flowers. Mm -hmm. um, and I think Kitchen Garden Therapy, Slava also did it. So just yep. a reminder, mm -hmm. if you're watching the replay, um, hey, Josh Skinner Farms, uh, Slava at Kitchen Garden Therapy, it was about 10 people away from her 1K milestone. And Rich at the Old Swedes Farm needs people to help him reach his 4k hour requirement wink wink 
So he has a beautiful playlist of all his videos in one location conveniently for you to take hmm. a look at. Binge watch. That, Binge watch. That was, that was nice of him to make it on the list. It just makes it so much easier, doesn't it? Yes. Somebody had to tell him to do it. Oh, jeez. <laughs> was that no, you? And no. And he's also the only person I know that has a sticker wall for his chickens. Anyway. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a question for the chat or the panel. Uh, do you have to have bees in order to have a successful garden? Or do you, can you just rely on nature's bees? I mean, I don't, I don't have any bees on the property is what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't either. You, you can we shake your plants. Bees. You can you shake your plants. Them. Shake your plants like tomatoes. Mm -hmm. I just shake the cages. Oh. But it's too windy here anyhow, and nature take its course now. Yeah. So. Where companion planting comes in quite a lot. Um, if you've got flowering herbs and things like that or other flowering plants around them, it's going to bring the pollinators in for you so you don't actually need to have bees on your property. I mean, we're in an urban setting and we're not allowed to have bees because it's a, a city ordinance. You're not just not allowed to have them because they they can swarm and the swarm yep. can, yeah. Yes. Yeah, what I do, the reason why is I looked up, um, I had looked up when I was doing the tomatoes indoors and um, good night, Troy, no worries at all. Monica at Bland's Promised Land Ranch uh, companion plants. Mm. Um, but one of the things that I was told to do for the indoors, cause tomatoes are self-pollinating mm. is to just shake them. Um, and that helps to set the fruit and so on. So I did do that. I even did it with my other ones in the greenhouse. However, sometimes bees stay in there. Those little tiny bees get in there. I don't exactly go out and chase them out at night. I just close the door and then the roof and we're good. But um, well, Monica, what if I can't find a companion for one of my plants? <laughs> I get a paintbrush for my fruit trees. You need to so, get in my profile on match.com. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I got Jesse's joke. Yep. <laughs> Congrats, Berkshire Farm. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Paintbrush. I, mean, I go over my cherry tree my plum tree, my apricot, my peach, they all get hand pollinated because when they're blossoming, it's still too cold for the pollinators to be out. Uh, so I wouldn't get any fruit if I didn't do that. So you go out there with a little brush? Yep, just a little soft paintbrush, but a different one for each tree because otherwise you're cross-pollinating and, um, yeah, you can't save the seeds if you wanted to. One of the, that's one of the things we, we have that hive. Sandy gave us um, a hive that she wasn't using. And, you know, when she had first offered to give it to us, I was like, oh, I got to think about it if I wanted to take it, you know, because one of the things we talked about was bees and I'm not a fan of bees, not a fan of anything that stings. And we talked about it. And one of the things that we talked about was putting something out there with an attractant like lemon balm and seeing if we could attract a, um, a swarm and see if they come just to attract for pollination. Cause that's one thing we don't have a lot of bees here. Um, and so then next year we might try to figure out honey and all that. So just seeing if we can catch something before we do anything. But Q said ants pollinate her plants all the time. <laughs> Okay. Wow. Yeah, I don't like ants. <laughs> I don't either. Uh, Jilly at Belly Acres says, no nope, butterfly bugs. Oh, I hate this chat when it jumps. Butterfly bugs and wind help pollinate. But don't bees like honey? Why can't you just hang some honey out there somewhere? <laughs> yeah, I've heard lemon balm works better than the attractant. <laughs> and is Lisa, go I didn't see where Lisa Colovi was going, leaving and going to bed. Lisa, are you going to bed? I wanted to say goodnight to you and thank you, my friend. No, she was um, saying goodnight to Barwin Forge. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought I saw goodnight Lisa Colovi, so I was like, whoa. Oh, I didn't kick her off, I'd like to say. She her I own stuff. promise I had a shower yesterday. <laughs> um, 
What are you saying? He's saying good night to her. Is he leaving? So let's see here. Oh, she's back. She's coming back. <coughs> are you ready to come back, Leanne? There she is. <sighs> I just wanted to be on the other side of the blue. Well, you can just <laughs> tell me and I'll move you over. <laughs> Bees love chuckers and scallion when they flower. Yep, they sure do. I'm sorry. Time is a really good one for bees, actually. Okay. They love time. Really? Yeah. They go nuts for it. Really? Mm hmm. <laughs> cool, Lisa Colovi. Thank you. Hey, since uh, Leanne's on here right now, Lisa, I got to tell you, do not watch her video that she put out today. It'll blow your mind away. Do not watch <laughs> yep. it. You will, you will, you'll be disappointed in yourself. <laughs> you want to hear the real story about this video? <laughs> changed, I was planning to do what minute. Lisa was doing, and Lisa's like, I need an idea. So I gave her my idea and went with that one. Yep. That's, that's the whole story about my video. <laughs> Because I told her if I'm going to make something, I had to make something that was my favorite, too, and easy. <laughs> so oh, I guess yeah. the easiest jam possible next to the one I did. <laughs> we don't eat a lot of jam. That's why. <laughs> and neither do we. Like. Yeah. I gave my neighbor a jar of mine, and he was just like, I was like, you know, he's by himself, and he's elderly. And I was like, you can take part of it and freeze it because i haven't frozen it yet i said i just didn't have any more containers and he's like oh no i'll eat it <laughs> <laughs> so funny so my funny hus my husband was pouring the marmalade onto ritz crackers tonight because he said he was starving i'm like we have bread <sighs> <laughs> that's awesome so blue so blue Yes. What are you going to be doing in your garden this weekend? Well, um, Tanny's youngest is coming around so they can move the shed around. Because nice. once the shed is moved around, we can put the greenhouse up. And once the greenhouse is up, I can put everything in it. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, I'm, de <laughs> but I'm definitely putting in the um, courgettes this weekend zucchinis because i grow something like i don't know somewhere between nine and 14 different varieties because i love yeah. them is it still cold there blue no it's actually um it was 23 degrees when we went to bed last night nice. celsius so mm -hmm. that was warm that was nice <laughs> um that's like 70 have... degrees jesse mm -hmm. i know <laughs> i don't know I, I can't figure it out in my head <laughs> Yeah, I have to I do the conversion <laughs> online. Um, we have a little space out the front that I'm going to turn into my herb garden and like a little fairy garden kind of seating area. Nice space out there too. So that's going to be done at some point shortly. But we have to actually weed the back garden because it's a jungle of – it's been abandoned pretty much. So it needs to all be stripped back and so that we can put everything in. So there'll be a lot of that happening before much else. But, yes, those seeds are going in this weekend. If it kills me, I don't care. It's happening. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> Good for you. And, yes, Monica, it's the sweet neighbor next door, not the other one. Good night, Monica. <laughs> we won't talk about the other one. Good night, Jilly at Belly Acres. Thank you. That's awesome. How about you, Leanne? What are you doing on your garden this weekend? Well, we're gonna, Anything? We're going to take the ones that we can't eat, the plants that we can't eat, and yank them out of the ground. The weeds. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on the weeds, though. So I, I don't know about lamb's quarter, but I don't think I want to eat it. You can or, be um, take those. Oh. You know, I've been trying to convince my husband the bottom leaves of the broccoli plants we could eat, but he won't. Mm -hmm. He's like, we're not that poor yet. <laughs> I was told put them in a pan and saute them in bacon grease. Well, everything's good with bacon grease. Yep. I, I was told that that is to die for, but I will tell you, um, Ryan doesn't want to eat them either. So it was funny. Last year I had so many of them. 
that I took my metal watering can because I knew that it, I wanted to spread it out and give it to the chickens over a few days instead of giving them all of it at once. Cause I was like, this is a cool resource. So I take all the broccoli, huge broccoli leaves and I'm so proud of myself. And I put them all in the can with some water to keep them perky and all that stuff. Rotten stinking chickens found it and ate it all. <laughs> Hit by the tree and I'm like, I gave them some. So I figured they wouldn't look. They ate every last one. I'm sure Ryan gave him the 411 on that. I'm sure. I'm sure. Just to make sure. Good night, Barb's Country Home. Yeah, they also um, they also ate all the cauliflower leaves, too. So. Chickens must be underfed. Yeah, right. <laughs> right now, we couldn't get layer pellet feed. We had to buy crumble, which is, for me, it's a mess. Because um, they hook it out with their bills, and it just, it's they went through a bag in a week, whereas the pellet would have lasted two and a half. Um, and so Ryan was telling me the other day, he's like, you know what they're doing? They're searching for the pellets. And I was like, yep. <laughs> I, I don't like the crumbled feed. It's just such a mess. Bye, Jerry. Thanks for being here. I used to um, turn the crumble feed into like a porridge with water, like a slurry. And yep. it made it last longer. Because they had to work harder for it. Smart. Smart. Yeah. I, I just don't usually buy it. The only time I buy crumble mm. is for the brooder. Yeah. Which, by the way, we are free of brooder babies for the first time in months. <laughs> hey, we have had brooders in the garage for months now. And we are finally free. But I think we are also um, incubating to replace some chickens next. But... The pheasants went out today, and I will put a video on Monday about that. You're reminding me of a mother who just lost her baby, or took her last baby out of diapers. Like, I have no more diapers to change. That's what you sound like to me right now. Yeah. That's how it feels, because, oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, like I've, I've said before, we have a room in our garage that is insulated. It's a perfect spot to put the brooders with a heat lamp, the, the other um, brooder plate, all that stuff. But when it gets warmer out, it stinks. It's mm. terrible. It stinks. Mm. So we're in there today putting the peepers on the pheasants and trying to figure out that whole navigating that world. And it went better than I thought. But, you know, you still have to catch the little buggers. But now we've got a really good system because we have these metal, metal rod frames so they're in rectangles and they have chicken wire on them. And we had taken them off from the old chicken coop and kept them and they fit perfectly on the brooders. So it makes life a lot easy. Whereas before we had have weights on everything and, and it was just a nightmare getting in there. Now it's a lot easier. So but, are, you still using, are you still using the uh, chicken saddles or the hen saddles? I am. I am. I switched them around and took it off of a few of them. And, um, in fact, I have to take one off tonight again because you can only leave them on so long. But one of the things is, um, we notice Dwight now that he is very active is starting to, his spurs are starting to leave, uh, marks on their backs. Mm -hmm. And I, I can't put hen saddles on everybody all the time. That's so I try to. I have two, and I try to put them on the ones that need them. So, like, I had the one that was injured. I put it on her for a while so her tail feathers would grow back. Took it off her. And I think we're going to have to pull his spur caps off. Can't you just put some, like, some eraser tips on the ends of them? I wish. I wish. But I think the most humane thing to do is to pull his spur caps off. I have read about it. Um, I have to look into it because he's – I've seen things where um, their spurs from mating can actually slice a hen open. Mm. And I don't want that to happen. He's a really good boy. He's not a problem. He has never been mean to us at all, but I just have to look at It's like the peepers. I have to look in what's the best humane way of dealing with it. So like a lot of people ask me about the peepers. Is that the most humane? People de-beak pheasants. I'm not de-beaking my pheasants. 
So the peepers go through um, a membrane in their nose and it does pinch them. But trust me, they were they were comfortable. They were not we put it through and it worked fine. Like they didn't even squirm. So I'd rather do that and make sure they're not um, eating you, each other. Why would you de-beak a bird? I mean, that's how they eat, isn't it? Yes. And so apparently um, that's a thing in a commercial industry. I don't know a lot about the subject. I'm just going to be honest with you. I read, I heard it somewhere and I was like, what the heck is de-beaking? And of course I fell down a spiral with it mm. and it apparently it happened in commercial industry and we don't do it. Hey, rights family homestead. Mm. Yes, we will. Um, so that's why we put the peepers on and we bought two different kinds. We had pinned and pin less. And originally I told Ryan, I didn't feel comfortable with the pinned. But I found that the pin less, when you picture it like this, you put them on them, they went like that. So they clipped in, but then it would block their ability to eat and drink. Uh, so we took yeah. them off and put the pinned in, and they were a lot snugger fitting. And all it has to do is block their immediate um, vision. Field of view. Right. So that way they don't peck at each other. Hmm. Yeah. The moral of the story, folks, lot. you're not homesteaders. Do not let your roosters go to bed with their spurs on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and your your pheasants without their peepers on. <clears throat> but yeah. Chickens in confined spaces, if there's a lot of them in a small space, they will start attacking each other because they will start getting a little bit territorial. And that's why people do it. It's because they'll start ripping feathers off and they'll start being horrible to each other and you know, it, it, that's why, basically. Good night, yeah. Berkshire Farm. Chickens are, aw chickens are awful, but apparently yeah. pheasants are also known that once they're in captivity, so to speak, mm. in a pen, you either need to triple what the size that they need and mm -hmm. reduce your male ratio like people do with um, quail roosters. Mm. Well, I don't know what we have. Good night, Little Creek. I don't know what we have. I can guess at what we have, but I've never had pheasants before. Ryan knows more about it. But chickens are awful. The minute there's blood, chickens are all over that. And these peepers, they also put on chickens because when I went to order them, they said the same thing. Like you, I had to make sure I got pheasants. And I think the pinned ones, or I'm sorry, the pinless ones that I got were actually for chickens, even though they should have been for pheasants. But we went to um, McFarlane, which is apparently a very known in the pheasant game bird industry. And we got the pinned peepers from what they use, which is really good. Thanks, Q, with Growing with Hudson. We're glad you joined us. Hope you have a good evening. But yeah, chickens are mean too. But we'll see what the best option is. So we're kind of getting down to the end, my friends. Closing comments. What are we doing for the weekend that you want to share about? It's too hot outside to do anything. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're 95 to 100 up here with 80% humidity. And they're talking about doing black, rolling blackouts. Oh, um, good night, old sweets. Night. Because it's too hot. And right. They didn't do that when it was cold. Yep. Yeah, well, this weekend, well, I'll probably just sit on my gourd. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, Jesse. Hey, Charlie, oh. fallen Arkansas veteran. Sorry, I didn't say hello to you. How yeah. frustrating. <laughs> I'm going to be watching the Jamming Up June videos and catching up on the playlist. Yep. <laughs> yep. Plug, oh, yeah. plug, plug, plug. <laughs> <laughs> Shameless plug. Well, hey, don't Peterson we all Farms. Have, don't we all have videos in that collaboration? So it's not yeah. a selfish plug. I still have to this finish Pam's video. Yeah. <laughs> I watched Pam's. I I have got to get caught up. I haven't had a chance because, you know, the, the weather got sunny and warm. So it was, see you later, YouTube. Got to get outside. Yeah. Well, Tony made it to where there was no incentive to watch him because we can't win any of the gifts. 
Yeah, I heard that. I'm like, what? <laughs> I just assume it. <laughs> so rolling blackouts, that is crazy. Well, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Because it's crazy. If somebody has a heat stroke. Just wait. Everybody's got their air yeah. conditioning mm -hmm. down to 73. And how long will they have it out for? Well, we've uh, never had it, so we don't know. There's I mean... No I think about people with oxygen. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> or people who can't tolerate the heat, which are usually people with oxygen. Well, uh, our our state uh, governor is, is pushing back on that, so I don't think, I mean, it's not necessarily going to happen, but they've been talking about it. You know? Gotcha. Um, but because you're right, there's a ton of people that are, that are barely, uh, you know, surviving with the air that they have, right? And then you take that air away. You know, there's a lot of people that, that, that pass pass away down here in Texas from the heat. Yeah. Hmm. For heat stroke and heat exhaustion and all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, there's a risk with blackouts. Now, it's it's different when you have a natural disaster. Typically, right. when a hurricane comes through here, it's not going to be real hot anyway when it first happens because it's all overcast and rainy. And But, but when you have just beautiful, hot, sunny day and all of a sudden no power... Mm -hmm. That's very dis very disturbing. <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you get warned? Do you know? No, when we had them before uh, during the uh, well, the freeze uh, we had a couple the freeze years in ago. February, in February uh, of two, two years, years ago. ago. No, they we would go four hours with no power. I think the longest we went was like what twelve hours <laughs> no power. But that was because well we're not we're not equipped for freeze weather. I mean we're not we don't have the right structure here that they have like in canada or right and or, or south dakota or, <laughs> or pennsylvania for that but matter. are you saying it was like a rolling blackout during that freeze thing or was it because of malfunctioning due to no. the freeze no it, was ro no, it wasn't they, they couldn't generate enough power to service six million or seven million people in the houston area gotcha Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. Power. Yeah, because I mean, you had all this, all the power stations were weren't all online, so they had portions of of power stations that were online. So it made gotcha. a difference to, to serve everybody. So we were lucky. We had a gas fireplace and a gas stove, so that helped. Yeah, us. You know, yeah. we weren't so lucky. That was this February, right? Two years, two years ago. ago. Two years ago. Okay. Because I know it was like two years in a row you guys got some kind of wicked weather. Because I know um, the oh, folks I, I knew in Texas, that. like Rebecca at Halbert Farms and stuff, they, a lot of people dealt with frozen hoses and stuff that they weren't used to. Right. Yeah. This one, this year wasn't as bad. So the previous year was the really bad one. Yeah. 17. That was the horrible one. Yeah. Wow. So, but we'll survive. We don't have a choice. I got food, so I'm good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got a pantry full. <laughs> I have a gas stove, so I can cook on the gas stove. That's right. So, who didn't I ask? So, you get everybody? Pam? Yes. Leanne? I think we got everybody. What are you okay. doing this weekend? Yeah. We yeah. are doing a poker run for charity tomorrow. Um, so it's a lot of motorcycles, but also um, a lot of side-by-sides because it's for the local chamber of commerce that will then distribute the money to a local charity. And it's five hours. Wow. So, hey, Iris, at the color drop. So we will be doing that. So tonight when I was talking to Blue Pixie down there, uh, messaging back and forth. I was getting pig pools filled up because it's supposed to be like in the 80, like 80 or so. Um, and for us, that's pig pool weather. So the pigs have all got water just because we won't be home and they need something to cool okay. off, which we can usually tell because Grant is usually um, digging up to find a little spot for himself. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, we're going to be doing that, and then we're going to be starting on Fiona's spot, mainly getting the house moved, because I think we've agreed on a spot finally. And then we're going to start putting farrowing rails um, in the two barns, and basically they both need like a 10 by 10 pen to keep it small, 
um, cause it was recommended to me, the larger it is, the more room for injury, whereas the smaller it is, the better it is because the piglets like to run around like crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, but we have to get Fiona in there. I say Fiona because Eleanor is staying where she is. Um, but Fiona has to be in her new place four to six weeks ahead of time. Hi, Tanny. Um, so that's what it's all hinging upon. We have to be able to get Fiona over. Whereas Eleanor, we can just put the rails in her barn and she'll be used to where she is. Do you have to go girl? No, the fox is sitting outside our front door. Let him in. He probably <laughs> oh, yeah, I want to. I want to, but I'm not allowed to because um, <laughs> the cat will eat him or vice versa, one or the other. But I saw we've got one that runs past at this time every day. And yesterday when he ran past, he was limping and had blood on his leg, so he'd been mm. injured. But now he's apparently sitting outside our front door. He might be injured. Yeah. Um, or maybe he's food. Are you going to go check him out? I will check him out in a bit. I just I don't want to freak him out too much because Tanny's about to move the van. So, um, yeah. But I think we've got a medieval church that lives across, well, that's across the road from us. And I think they live in there, in, in the churchyard. And what time is it there now? Um. 4.26 a.m. <laughs> Kristen at Capone Cabin wanted to make sure. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. And I've been awake since one. <laughs> That's right. You and I were talking a lot earlier. <laughs> She's like, wow. <laughs> I'm awake. <laughs> well, I think we're going to call it a night, y'all. It's late for everybody. Mm -hmm. I just want to thank everybody, including Diane from Shell Hollow Armstead for being here from Instagram. I want to thank Jesse and Lisa from Lazy Days Ahead for coming and talking about their experiences, as well as Leanne from the Mennonite Farmhouse and Blue Pixie from Blue Self Reliance. Um, I think it was a really good discussion on growing food. If you guys are liking this, I will keep this format because I'm quite, kind of passionate about it. I like talking about it. <clears throat> but I just want to thank everybody in the chat for coming. Thanks for being here. Thank you, moderators. And if I missed you in the chat again, I'm sorry. It jumps and I hate it. But it's kind of hard managing all this. Yeah. Can you guys agree with that? Yeah. It's rough sometimes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, thank you again, everybody. And I hope you all have a wonderful, beautiful weekend. And thank you so much to my beautiful guests for coming tonight. Thank you, thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. No problem. You guys are always welcome. Take care, everybody. Mm -hmm. Bye, y'all. Bye-bye.